just ask according to how the thing is arranged here. Um, Happy did not start with us, so don't let me start with Happy. Let me start. I don't know whether Happy started with us, but let me start with Victoria. Victoria, please ask your question. And always remember to unmute yourself when you want to start talking. Victoria, do you have any questions? Hello, everybody. Good evening once again. You're welcome. Yes, I have. No, you know, what, what actually let, what is leading to my question is I can see you actually make up and I mean, I was just wondering what time of the day it is are you saying? Mm -hmm. like, and I, I want, my question is like, what is like the level of physical appearance and confidence, you know? I don't know. So we will just like, okay, I, I, I want my bare face like that, going to work and like, no, no makeup, nothing. And so we will be like, ah, how can you go to work without makeup? You need to look this way, to look that. I just want to know if like there is like any, um, if physical appearances, makeup, and all this affect, you know, branding. Affect. I, I understand your question perfectly. <laughs> so it is 8 p.m. now in Cote d'Ivoire. I know that will be 9 p.m. Nigerian time. I don't know what time it is in South Africa. Uh, King Eni, I've forgotten your real name. King Eni, can you tell us the time in South Africa? I think Emmanuel. His name is Emmanuel, right? King Emi. Your... It's 10 o'clock now in South Africa. Your name is Emmanuel. Your name is Emmanuel. Okay, yes. 10 o'clock in South Africa. Who else is from another country here? Yeah. Uh, I think we are all Nigeria. All the other people are from Nigeria. Okay, so it's 8 p.m. in Cote d'Ivoire. And if I am going to be doing this live video 11 p.m. or 12 p.m., I'm still going to be dressed the way I'm dressed. Now to your question, Victoria. Let me tell you something. It's it's not even about it's not even about makeup now. You might dress well and not makeup. It's not even about makeup. And so let me tell you something. A fact that a lot of people don't want to listen to or they don't want to hear. The fact is, your appearance is directly proportional to your confidence level. That is it. Take it or leave it. Your appearance, your dressing, the way you appear is is not inversely. Oh, I know people that know mathematics here like me. We know when they say inversely uh, proportional. No, say inversely, uh, proportional. Where is this echo coming from? Please, everybody should meet themselves so that Where we don't have echo. Uh, Timmy, please meet yourself. Okay. So your 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 appearance. I, I have talked about someone I, I think I did a live video recently on Facebook and I was talking about the fact that one lady did a live video with a net. I don't know whether she's just waking up from bed. I don't even know because I did not watch the initial live video. The one I watched was where she she declared a challenge. She declared a a net challenge. A net challenge. She said people should do a one minute more minute video. Of themselves putting on hair nets because when she did a video and she was putting on hair net, people were condemning her, people were criticizing her. They say, Ah, how can you do live video with hair net? So now we don't want to pretend, we just want to, we cannot be, we, we, we don't want to fake it, we don't want to pretend, we don't want to package anything. Let's just appear the way we are. So now we are going to do hair net challenge. Everybody go and put your hand. I was just looking at her like this. <laughs> I was just looking at her like this and I was just shaking my head for her. Now, this is the question you need. Nobody is saying you should pretend. Nobody is saying you should package. Nobody is saying you should come and do, show us who you are, not on social media. But the question you need to ask yourself is, would you have gone to your shop or your office with air nets because you don't want to pretend? Like you will tell your boss when you get to the office, like, oh, God, I don't want to pretend, though. This is who I am. You need to take me for who I am. And this is the way I woke up on my bed with my hair net. And this is the way I'm coming. <laughs> will you obey your boss that? No. Even if you are not an employee, even if you own your business, will you have gone to your shop or your store with your hair net on? No. The answer is no. So this one is not a matter of whether somebody is packaging or somebody is not packaging. This is the, the matter of acceptable standard. What is reasonable? What is acceptable? What is logical? When you're appearing on a live video, 
or even even if you're not appearing on a live video, even if you're appearing in a in a in a live session like this, because you wouldn't know anything can happen. Someone can say, Oh, switch on your camera or something. You need to appear well. I mentioned I mentioned the, the brand, uh, the Global Brand Summit, one of, uh, uh, a very big event I had recently. And did you know that apart from dressing well for those events, you will not believe something that I did. It's weird, right? For every of the session, because we had like five or six sessions with different guest speakers. For every of those sessions, I was wearing a shoe. It's a live event, though. It's an online event. I was wearing a shoe. Because I don't know the way it works for other people, but now I'm not wearing a shoe now. Don't worry. <laughs> I don't know how it works for other people, but for me, I get so much confidence in myself when I'm well dressed. When I go to work and I dress well, my productivity level is 101 percent. When I go for an event, there's this confidence in me that I, I know I'm dressing well. You cannot look down on me. And dressing well does not does not have anything to do with makeup. Whether you use makeup or not, what is important is you, you, you look neat. Your face is dry. Your lips is glossy. You know, you look presentable. Your hair is well packed. Your, your, your dress or your clothes is neat, well ironed. You know, your colors matches. You are not doing color. Just make sure you dress well. So I think I've said enough on that. So for me personally, and I know for other people, for majority, Dressing is one of the key elements that will boost your self-confidence. Yes. Thank you for that question. And we'll move to the next person for our question. Maria, please, let's have your question. So one question per person. Please prepare your question before I get to you. By the time I get to you and we're doing him, 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 I will move to the next person because we have just one half. So Maria, please, let's have your question. Are you ready? Do you have, if you don't have any questions, just unmute yourself and tell us you don't have questions so that we can move to the next person. Sorry, I don't have any questions. All right, thank you. So I'll move to Emmanuel. Emmanuel from South Africa. Please go ahead with your question. Uh, good evening once again. My question is, how do, you, uh, how do you attract the right mentor in your niche? especially if you're switching from one career to another. Okay, thank you. Please mute yourself back so that we don't have echo. Um, the way you attract mentor in your niches, identify key industry players in your niche. Identify key industry players. Find a way to build relationship with them. That's number two. Now, the relationship building can come in so many ways. It can come in, term, in terms of if they want to do an event, you attend. And when you are attending, you are not coming when they are almost done. In fact, you, you, you are even there before they even start so that you will sit at the front. I remember a particular lady, I, I shared her stories uh, sometimes uh, last year on Facebook. She lives in UK. She's a Nigerian, but she lives in UK. And she heard that, Obafemi, uh, I said Obafemi, <laughs> former president is going to be coming to UK for a meeting. And she said in her heart that she's going to be the PA of Olusegun Obasanjo. And you know what she did? She, she got the address. In fact, she went to the venue a day before to go and so that she is one, it won't look like she's missing her way on the day of the, the event. So she went ahead. She got the full details of the address. She already know the place. The next day, which is the day of the event, she went there one hour, one hour before the event will start. When she got there, she sat at the front. She already, because there's this name tag on each table, she said she positioned herself where Olusha Mobasanjo will not have any choice than to see her. Like, I don't know how she positioned herself, but I know she was sitting in a place where Olusha Mobasanjo was going to have whether consciously or unconsciously, will have a high contact with her. And immediately they finished the event. I think they wanted to have, they, they had a break in between, just like we had this break. They had a break in between. And immediately they finished, she stood up and she went to the man and said, good afternoon, sir. My name is Omoba Bereniadiola Oshideko. And if you don't mind, sir, I would love to be your PA for today. 
please kindly follow me. And the man was like, ah, who is this one now? <laughs> but the man followed her. She took the man to a very uh, small room, to one room, because I think the lady is part of the organizers anyway. She took him to the small room. Uh, before they got there, she was already arranged tea, coffee, and water. Probably she is going to need any of the three. Please, sir, have your seat. This is tea. This is coffee. Please uh, do, uh, let me know if you, you know. And the man was just like, ah, who is this one? Uh, fear by fire by force. And while uh, the former president was resting, was trying to relax, was having to, trying to have a break. I hope my story is not boring. I hope it's not offline. I'm, I'm getting, I'm driving at something. So they were discussing, they were just saying, because it's just the two of them below in the room. So the former president asked her, gentle lady, who are you? Who are you? The lady started introducing herself. Oh, I am a Nigerian. I was born in the UK. My parents have not been to Nigeria for a while. Immediately, I heard that you're coming. I, I love to meet you. I've heard so much about you. I've read so much about you. She started selling the man some of the amazing things he has been doing. You are this. You did this. I commend you. You're doing well, sir. Thank you for helping Nigeria. And, the, and you know... Before you know it, they started talking, they started talking, and that was how they established a relationship, right there. And she took some pictures with the man, and that singular story, that just that story, <laughs> someone that doesn't have a Twitter account before, I think that day or the next day, she opened a Twitter account, and that was the first story she shared, how I became the PA of Olusha Gombasanjo in United Kingdom. And when she shared the story, the story went viral and everybody started sharing. From zero follower, from zero follower, that, that, by the time, the, I think I got to know about the story the sixth or seventh day. By the time I got there, she already had like 6,800 followers within the space of seven days because of that story. So the long and short of it is, if you want to attract the right mentor in your need position yourself i've just told you one 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 tactic now attend where they are going to be speaking if you know they are going to be uh in a live event go there they, you might not have the chance to talk to them in all all, all all the cases hello sir i'm this and this and this you know and that is why your elevator pitch should be handy there's something we call elevator pitch Within one minute or 30 seconds, you should be able to tell us who you are. It's not, eh, my father died in 1980. When my father died now, ah, we suffer. We suffer, 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 suffer. That was how my, uh, before you finish that one, the man don't go. They don't have time. So your elevator pitch should be handy. I am so, 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 though, I do this, 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 you know, I list, I watched one elevator pitch on LinkedIn today, and I was really, I was really amazed. She, uh, the, the, the elevator pitch is from Temi Kupola. I know if you are from LinkedIn, you know Temi Kupola. She's a social media influencer on LinkedIn. And she was at an event today. This today, she was at an award event in the Opas Palace in Ilefe. And they asked everybody to be introducing themselves. I think she and I asked someone to record her or something. I don't know, but she posted the video and I saw it. Wow. I was just like, wow, this is it. Do you know, as she was sitting in that event, she already connected with someone beside her. And when they asked her to introduce herself, that was a short story she first mentioned. I will send a link to the WhatsApp group. You need to go and watch that elevator. Pitch. See, when opportunities present themselves, don't, 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 be, don't be like a Jessica about it. Don't take it with levity. It is an avenue for you to sell yourself. Go out there and sell yourself. So, like I'm saying, uh, uh, try to find them offline, engage with them, engage with the social media posts, contents, buy their courses, buy their training, buy their books. Those are some of the ways you can connect with people. For some of us, we are not ready. Ordinary 5,000 naira you cannot bring out of your pocket. You are not ready. You are not ready. You are not ready. Because if you don't have the influence, there are some certain people you cannot assess. Just like I told you that I organized the Global Brand Summit recently. I was able to invite some prominent people. I, these are people that I don't, I, 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 I do not buy their course. I did not buy any of the training. I've never met them on any offline event. Did you know how I got the attention of those people? I got their attention with the name of I am a TEDx organizer. 
So when I go into the inbox, I just say, good afternoon. My name is Omo Baburi. I did launch deco. I'm so, 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 and so. I'm the TEDx organizer for TEDx Benjamin View. I'm this, 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 that, and this. You know, hearing the word TEDx alone, so there is nobody that will not want to listen to me. Out of all the people that I approached for the invitation, so it was only two people that turned me down. And those two people, it was because there was a shift in the change. No, three people. It was majorly because there was a shift in the change, in the dates, and they could not meet up with the dates. So there are so many ways you can use to assess people. You just need to understand what's work. I did not. So if I didn't be, I'm not a TEDx organizer, probably I will have had to buy their course before, buy their training before. Then I say, good afternoon, ma. I am one of your students in something, 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 academy. Or this one, this one, this one, mentorship program. Or this one, this one, session. You know? If somebody hear that, they will give you access. They will listen to you. But you are just coming from anywhere. They don't even know you. Even, even offline events, some people take gifts. They go with small amper. You understand what I'm saying? You, you go with a small amper. In that small amper, you will write a short note because these are people that don't have time. So you can write a short note. Hello, sir. I must, I must, uh, I must, um, I, I must uh, not forget to appreciate you. There's this particular English I want to use. I can't remember that word again. I cannot but say thank you to you for the job you're doing. Well done, sir. You're really doing well. Blah, 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 blah. My name is so, 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 and so. This is my contact. I would, yeah, I would love to, uh, I would love to get in touch to you through your email. I already have your email. Blah, 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 blah. Thank you. A very short note. Just drop it in the hamper. And as the man is coming from the hall, is coming from the venue or something. So good afternoon, sir. I knew you were going to be here, speaking here today. I just said I should bring this mortgage for you. And boom, you just give it to him. And by the time he gets home, he's unwrapping the thing. He will see your short notes. So by the time you're sending an email to him, you already have an idea. You'll just say, good afternoon, sir. I am that young guy who met you at the event this evening or yesterday or the last week or something, something. With that, your name will resonate. They will not delete your mail. But you, they don't know you. You are just coming from you. are just saying, good morning, sir. Come and be my mentor. They will delete your mail. Done, done. Nobody has time for that. So you need to get access to them through whatever means you know you can use, you know. So engage with your posts. Let them see you. And when they say engage, it's not a nice post. Well done, sir. Beautiful clothes. Nice smile. Uh, you're on the long term. Engage meaningfully. Engage intelligently so that there is no way they will not know that you are on that broadcast. There is no way they will not, they will say they did not see your, your comments. There are some people today on my social media platform that I don't know them. I've not seen them physically, but because of their comments, they have not become a name that I cannot resist. Even if they come to my inbox, I give them attention because these are people I see often connecting with my posts. I hope my answer is helpful. So um, I, I just wish we would be able to, I wish we would be able to spend one hour and not more than one hour. So um, let me go to Adekemi. Adekemi or Yewusi. You did not introduce yourself, I think so, when we started. I think you joined us midway. So introduce yourself. So this is it. If you have not introduced yourself since we started, just introduce yourself before you now ask your question. One question per person. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. You're welcome. Okay. I'm sorry. I actually joined. I joined late. Um, okay, so my name is, I don't know if the introduction followed the pattern, but yeah, let me just name, say a bit about my and uh, Okay, so um, I'm Adekeme Yewusi. Um, I'm based in Lagos, and I work as a service coordinator at the servicing company. Okay. So that's just a brief introduction about myself. So do you have any questions? Um, to be honest, the question I wanted to ask is actually related to what you just answered. Uh, yeah. But um, I would like to focus more on. Okay, please go ahead. We have some issues with the network. Your voice is not that clear. Yes, I'm just going to add more to what you've answered. And I'm going to... Okay, please go ahead. There's a LinkedIn social media platform. Ah, that's all. When you do 
a post. For example, I'm a cancer um, child with people to be able to, you know, check out your post and things you share. Sometimes LinkedIn will remind you that, oh, what you just shared just has five views. You need to tag someone and, you know, all of that. I mean, it's okay to tag people that are within that cycle. I think it's my next book. It's not quite good here. I'm very sorry. Are you done? Because we have little issue with your network. Are you done, uh, Adekemi? Uh, I, I lost the connection. I just lost Okay, okay. Hello? We can hear you very well now. Please go ahead. Okay. <laughs> okay, so um, I was saying earlier that, um, for example, I'm a childhood cancer advocate. And usually I do a lot to write ups about childhood cancer and all of that because as a survivor and um you you just don't get the right you don't get the audience to view your post because for adventure you're not in the right um in the right space so how do you really get your um people to how do you get the attention of people on social media especially linkedin i would just like you to add more to it as i said my question is still a bit related to what you just answered but i wanted you to special to um, talk more on social media, getting the attention of the right person in social media. Okay. Aside adding them as a connect, yes. Okay, so uh, I've mentioned that you should engage meaningfully on their content because by the time you engage meaningfully on their content, some other people in that area that like your content, that like your comment on that post, they will check you out and they will follow you. So that is the way you can attract people of like minds or people within your niche. Look at, uh, at industry experts. The first thing you need to do is identify who are the industry experts in your niche. Connect with them, engage meaningfully on their posts, and you will discover that as time goes on, by the time you are dropping meaningful content, comments, you think they are the only ones seeing it. No, they are not the only one. Other people are also seeing it. And that is how they will start connecting with you and start, start buying into your idea. And another thing is that uh, in the case of tagging people, sincerely, I really do not agree with that idea of tagging anybody, tagging people in your post. Just you go to my LinkedIn account and check very well. I hardly tag people. I hardly. Maybe like just 2% or 3% times, that's when you will see me tag people. Now, that doesn't mean you should not tag people, but make sure when you're tagging people, you're tagging them in things that are related to them. You can come up with a post like, while I was reading Mr. So, 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 and so post, you tag him. He mentioned something that caught my attention. And in, I was able to learn this. And, you know, you are trying to make that person feel good because with that, you are telling that person, oh, you did a good job on your content. I was able to learn this. And with that, you can tag them to bring their attention to yourself. So when you're, when you're on social media, you need to be intentional about why, why you're there. It's not just, not just that you are just moving up and down aimlessly without, without having a target. You understand? So being uh, intentional, it's going to help you position yourself in a place where people will see you. So those are just the few tips I can share on that. So uh, let's go to the next person. Innocent, please ask your question. Good evening, you're welcome. Yes, my, um, my name um, is Ray Innocent. I base in Negar State. My computer is short Okay, I'm moving over to my question, talking about personal branding. And you mentioned stuff, some stuff on like what Google says about you. Like, yeah, I've watched some people. Okay, I check out the I check out their names and I see some things about them which is awesome. Now I really want to know those things. How was it formed? Like, we did want that kind of put such information on Google or Google reviews such thoughts about them. But just like my name, Shah, when I search on my name, I will see my LinkedIn handle. And I will see my Facebook handle. Then I will see my then taking up images. I will see my pictures and all that. So I want to get to know more about them. 
Tonight works. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, uh, part of the bonus, I said I will give. I said I will give you oh, some e-books, three e-books besides. I, I think I put it on the flyer. So one of them is going to contain how you can find yourself on Google, things you can do. But before we get the ebook, the ebook is going to be available from Monday. Before the ebook is available to you or before you have access to it, let me quickly mention a few things. It's not like you go and put your stuff on Google or you open one Google account and put it. No, it doesn't work that way. What makes you to be visible on Google is the things you're doing generally online, whether on social media, whether on Google itself, whether on blogs, whether on all these online, other online platforms. The things you are doing is what makes Google to be able to locate you or to be able to bring you out. So when you, when you type your name, for instance, if you type my name on Google, you will see, uh, you will see some of the live videos I've done. You'll see my YouTube channel. You will see some blog appearances that I've had in the past. You'll see my LinkedIn account. You'll see all my social media accounts. You'll see my book on Amazon. So there are certain things you have to do to get yourself on Google. So it's not just that you just appear and just come on Google Boom. No. I made a post on LinkedIn recently where I talked about my daughter saying that she could get me on Google and she also wants to be found on Google. In fact, she told me categorically during when we were having the live chats, uh, the live video I had with her and her brother. She told me that, ah, my mommy me too, I'm now on Google. <laughs> I was just laughing like, ah, see this girl. <laughs> Because that was what actually inspired her to write a book. I never knew. All this time, she would just come and meet me. My mommy, ah, I can find you on Google. I can find you on Google. So I never knew. So as young as she is, she knew that these are the things that made me to appear on Google. So she determined in her heart that she's going to write a name so that she can also appear on Google. And if you go and type my, if you type my daughter's name on Google, now you'll find that there. That thing used to make her happy, eh? Oh, God. <laughs> She'll say, ah, come and see me on Google. If I, all our friends in the school, she'll tell them, oh, yeah, type my name on Google. You'll see me there when they go for their computer uh, lessons in the computer lab. So writing a book is another way to get on Google. Publishing it on Amazon, not just Amazon, all these other e-books. Uh, um, I don't know what do they call them. Where they sell books online, all this online stuff for books. I think we have Goodreads. We have um, Okada Books. We have so many of them where you can publish your book. So all those things are what, you, what is going to give you visibility. When people invite you for events, they put you on a flyer, they publish it anywhere, all those things. So I'm going to come up with an e-book, maybe just two pages or three pages of what are the specific things you can do to get yourself on Google because it's actually good uh, because when people want to know more about you, uh, recently I was in Nigeria and somebody just called my line. I wasn't, I wasn't expecting it. When a person called me, I was like, who is this person? Like, because I didn't tell anybody I'm coming to Nigeria. I just told a few close people. Very few, maybe two or three people. So when I, I picked the call, I was like, good afternoon. She said, good afternoon. Are you Omoba Berin? So, 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 so. And so I said, yes. She said, I want to invite me for a television program. I was just like, ah, how did you get my number? And this is just a beautiful coincidence because I don't live in Nigeria. I just came to do something. I came to write an exam. And this, your call is coming through. So she gave me a date and I thought that this date I would have returned uh, back to my base. Let's adjust it. So we adjusted it and had a television appearance. And later I asked her, I said, how did you get to know about me? She said they were looking for a branding expert to come and talk on personal branding for career professionals, for women career professionals and the Google personal branding expert or personal branding speaker or something. And they saw me. They saw a lot of us anyway. But she said why she picked me was that she saw one of my live videos and the way I was speaking in that live video, I was speaking so authoritatively, like I really know what I'm talking about, that she just said, ah, this is the woman we are going to take. And she, she, she I don't know how she even got my number. Probably she went to my Facebook or my LinkedIn, I don't know. But somehow, somehow she was able to get my phone number and she called me. If I am not on Google, how would they, how would they see me now? No, they will not be able to say because she doesn't know me. She doesn't know my name. It's when you know my name that you type she doesn't even know me. So all she typed is personal branding speakers or branding experts or something, something. And a lot of us popped up. And I was part of them. And that was how she was able to assess me. 
Okay, if it's something that will give me multi-million naira dollars now, that is a, a multi-million naira uh, uh, yeah. dollar naira, whatever, whatever. If something that is going to fetch me good money, that's the way she, she's going to get in touch with me. So that is one of the essence of making yourself visible on Google. So that ebook, I don't want us to draw too much on this because other people need to ask their question. From that ebook, you will be able to get more specific things you need to do to to become visible on google so let me go to the next quest person are you there please go ahead with your question my name is Lord and i am based i'm open based but i'm not currently in the state i am a graphic designer and athlete marketer Okay. I, I don't have a question. You specifically touched most of um, the things that to I needed to ask. So thank you very much for this opportunity. Me and I will meet on Facebook and uh, on WhatsApp. <laughs> as you are. No problem. Thank you. So <laughs> let me move to the next person. Ola Kemi, please go ahead with your question. Uh, no question. Ola Kemi, are you there? Please go ahead with your question. Please, if you don't have any questions, just tell us you don't have any questions so that we can move to the next person. Are you there? Okay. Since she's not available, let me move to Opolua Martins. Opolua, please. Right, thank you. Good evening. I think Opolua Kemi is here now. Okay. Please, yes, hold ma. on. Good evening. Once again. Good evening. You're welcome. All right, ma. Um, I just want to ask, um, like, what I do... I, I coach people on relationship and I have discovered that um, I know I, I did thorough research and I see that most times when we talk about relationship, people see it from the angle of um, the romantic aspect of um, relationship. And so I, I just decide that um, I'm going to like fuse in other aspects of relationship. So that is what I, I have been doing. And I have an online academy to that effect. Now, my question is this. How do you, how, how do I, you know, it, it appears a bit somehow new and people might not really want to understand, you know, what I actually do. How do I make people understand? How do I boost their understanding? How do I make them understand what I actually represent or what I, I am doing? So that is that is my question. Like, how do you, you know, how do you get, get people message. to understand? That, yeah, okay. So I understand. And um, so, ah, you are you, okay, you can only ask one question. No? Okay. <laughs> one question. Okay. Because okay. Of our time. Okay. okay. I understand your question perfectly well. Do you know that was what I started with? I started as a relationship management, whatever, whatever. I don't know, but I just know I have passion for relationship management. And that was why I wrote my first book based on that, Building Great Relationships. That, that was my first book. I've written six books so far. My first is Building Great Relationships. My second is Building a Personal Brand That Makes Money. My third is The Chronicles of Minta. Okay, for people don't, that don't know the meaning of Minta, Minta is my nickname given to me by my Facebook fans. The meaning is mommy in their brood. And that was my third book. My fourth book is My Dreams Are Valid. That's like my life story. That's part of my life story. My Dreams Are Valid, that's number five. Number six is, oh, that's number four. Number five is The Business of Coaching. I've written a book on coaching. Number six is The Chronicles of Minta, part two. Or series two. So those are the uh, six books I've written so far. So when I wrote that first book, which is uh, Building Great Relationships, what inspired me to write that book was that a lot of people do not pay attention. Hmm, I'm coming. My, my laptop battery is low. I have not been charging it. I'm coming. One minute, please. Uh, thank God I even checked, though. I've not plugged it since. I'm 
Ah, the thing would have just go off suddenly. Come, let me check if it's charging now. Okay, it's charging now. Who is this person sending message up and down? Ah, we should go. Okay, sorry. So, so uh, I said what uh, motivated me or what inspired me to write that book is that a lot of people don't pay attention to other relationships apart from romantic. Anything that is not a romantic relationship, they don't pay attention to it. And relationship, just like you said, is more than romantic relationship. We have so many interpersonal relationships today that are having problems and we all need to understand. So many, there are so many things that, in fact, that my book, eh, I, I did a review of it recently. And even the woman that invited me to come and do that review, she had to order for that book. She was like, ah, this book is too loaded. When I did the review about So there are so many things we need to understand about relationship that people do not understand yet. So I think the, way, the, the, re, the only way you can communicate so that they won't think your relationship coaching is just about romance, probably you should call it relationship management. Don't call it relationship coach. You can call yourself a relationship management coach. Relationship. So when you put in management, something is already telling somebody that this is not just about romance. So, and in your bio too, you will need to be able to find a way to talk about it that more than romance, you know, you can, you can, you can develop a, a slogan for yourself, like more than romance, like relationship is more than romance. Relationship is wide or something. So just, you need to just find a way around it. But I think you should start calling it relationship because even me now, I'm just knowing that you are into relationship. Generally. I never knew. I was thinking it's just this relationship and marriage because that's what we see up and down everywhere. That's what we are familiar with. So when you say you're a relationship coach, I just think normal relationship. I love you. I love you. If I can't, see, if I don't see you, I can't hit. If I don't see you, I can't sleep. I was thinking that. <laughs> so my only advice is probably should have management to it. Relationship management coach, so that people will know that it's not just about romance. I think that answers your question. Thank you. So um, we'll move to the next person. Kwelumi, please go ahead with your question. Kalumi, are you there? We are waiting for you. Kalumi, are you there? I think he or she is not ready yet. Opalua Martins, please go ahead. Opalua Martins, are you there? Ah, now wow. Have they slept or what? I don't understand. Okay, Lua, we are listening to you. Okay, I've, re I've reduced the volume of my computer. So sorry. Um, sorry, sorry. I'm the one. I've reduced the volume of my computer when some people are sending in messages. Then was just making noise. So who is speaking now? Okay, Lua, please go ahead. After you... Good evening, everybody. Good evening. I don't have any questions. Oh. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Balumi, are you there? Hello, good evening. Good evening, you're welcome. Okay, thank you so much for this insightful session. I mean, a lot of people would have paid, would have asked us to pay for it, but you made it free. Thank you so much. So uh, my question is, you know, some people like me, we are introverts, and sometimes when you want to have social media presence to build your, your personal brand, it's like a struggle because you don't really want to put yourself out there. You want to maintain your personal life, but it's like everybody's going uh, digital now. Everyone is going on social media. So how do you actually balance? Like, you don't want to put yourself too much out, but you still want to have a um, social media presence. So how can I you know, develop that? Thank you. Okay. I have a post I made recently. It's not recently. I will, I will look for that post and send the link to the WhatsApp group. Um, how to how to build a brand and remain private how to build a brand and remain private that's post uh, I think what I would recommend for everyone here is uh, this is my new book The Chronicles of Minta the book is free, don't worry, don't get scared it's free it's my birthday gift to my audience uh, this month of May in that book, I put over 100 of my 
the book is basically the book basically contains my MMM Monday Morning Motivation post. But later I added some other posts that are not even Monday Morning Motivation. So I think this particular one should be in that book. I, I, I think so should be there. So if you get that book, there are some of my posts that will be useful for you that are in that book. But let's leave that. I'm going to send the link to you, the link to download that book, and probably the link to that particular post. But the thing is, you can build a brand on social media and remain private. There are rules and regulations to it. And in that post, you will, you will get to read a lot about it. Number one is that you will decide what you want to share. You will decide what you want to share. Of course, there is no way you will be on social media that some of your personal life will not be on social media. There is no way. Go to Google. Go to Wikipedia. Today, if I want to know the age of my academic guy, if I type it, what is my card? It will bring it out. So most of the time, you, there is no secret. There is nothing you are hiding. They even know some of them. You know your children. Who is the husband of Genevieve? Is to bring it out. Even if she doesn't have a husband, to say we don't see any husband here. You know. So what I'm trying to say is that most of the time, you cannot really go private completely, but you can set boundaries. You know. I tell people, when people say, oh, don't talk about everything on social media, be private. I tell them, Pri the word private is subjective. Is, is related. What is private to you might not be private to me. I've seen people that don't share the pictures of their children on social media. I've seen people who do not share the pictures of their family on social media. But they share about their workplace. So I don't share about my workplace, except to come to LinkedIn. You might never know where I work. In fact, it's even because LinkedIn is a professional platform. That's why I put where I work there. Normally, I wouldn't have put it. I can guarantee you that 90% of my fans on Facebook don't know where I work. Because I don't talk about it. I don't even mention it. Because I want that part of me to be private. So you can choose what you want to be private. I, I post about my children. So we can see someone posting, not posting about their children now, but posting about their work. So it depends on you, what you call private. So what is private to you might not be private to me. So it, you are the one that would define what your own private is. A lot of people don't know my husband. 99.9% .9 of people don't know my husband because I don't talk about him. So you can choose what you want to talk about. You can choose. I don't, I don't, I hardly take pictures. I hardly take pictures for you to see the whole view of my sitting room. I hardly take pictures in my car. You know, there are some parts of me I just want out of social media. No matter how I talk and talk and talk on social media, there are parts of me that I just, I don't just want it on social media. So you can decide what you want to be, what you want to make private and what you want to make public. So you can make some part of your life private if you so wish. But one thing you cannot make private is your image, your face. You cannot, make, you cannot be anonymous on social media and say you want to be there, but that one is not possible. We need to see who you have. We need to know you. A lot of people, your social media, they don't even have, some of you don't have, um, Picture on your WhatsApp. You are using one Jesus picture. As if we, we don't know Jesus. You are using one no, Juju Kalaba picture. You are using one funny image. You can't do all that. You can't do all that. You need to put a name to your brand. That one is not negotiable. But other things, you can decide whether you want it to be public or private. So that is what I will say about that. I will, I will, I will, I will send the link. Please. All those things I'm saying, I will send to you. Please. You guys should remind me. If you don't remind me, you're on your own. Way. So let's move to the next person. Sarah Van are you there? Ah, she don't run away. I think that's what I Okay. Oluani Femi Ojo, do you have a question? If you do, please go ahead. Yes, ma. I have a question. Um, thank you very much for the special session. I really like so much. Uh, my question is, how did you become a TEDx organizer? How did I become a TEDx organizer? Oh. <laughs> okay. 
That one is a long story. Okay. It's actually not something I can tell you here because it's going to take a whole of our time. But I have a training. Okay. I have a training that I organized recently uh, that take people through that process. In fact, not just an organizer. You know, we have TEDx speakers. We have people that, that are not organizers. They just want to be a speaker. But being an organizer is more powerful than being a speaker. Maybe I tell you I'm an organizer. I mean, I, I make people TEDx speakers. I had my TEDx event in Benjaville. Benjaville is a city in Cote d'Ivoire. Mm, like we have Lagos, we have Abuja and all that. So I had my event in January and I had seven speakers or six. They are hotter speakers now. They are hotter speakers. So it means I have the power to make people, to organize an event and make people become TEDx speakers. So organizer is more powerful than speaker. But of course, being a TEDx speaker is also good as well. But I won't be able to explain all that here. All I can say is I have a training where I teach that. If I teach how you're going to apply for your license. I teach about what you're going to do. Because if you apply, there's no guarantee they will give you the license. There are things you need to put in place. If you want to become it, you don't want to go to because... Being a terrorist organizer is, is big, but it's going to cost you more. It's going to cost you more. You will not pay TEDx to get the license, but it's going to cost you more in terms of organizing the event because it's of you no know, use. If you say you are an organizer and you are not in, in organizing any event, once in a year you must organize an event. Next year now, I will organize another one. So it's more expensive to be an organizer because believe me, some of the private some of your personal money might need to go with it. That's the truth. So, uh, but if you don't want to go through all those audios, you just want to be a speaker and just add the title TEDx speaker to your name or to your initials, there's another training. In that training, so I'm going to be teaching you how you can become a TEDx speaker, how you can get TEDx speaking engagement. To cut the long story short, it's a training, it's a paid training, 10,000 Naira. So anyone who is, and it's self-paced, it's like an online course. So you can just take it anytime you like. It's not like, you must take it now, now, you must take it tomorrow. You can take it anytime you like. So anyone who is interested in that training should let me know. Is it four weeks? Is it four, is it four weeks or let me just say four modules. The training is in four modules. And in that training, you will learn, in fact, you will not even learn just about how to become a TEDx organizer. You learn a lot about public speaking. Because your public speaking skills needs to be sound before you can say, oh, I want to become a TEDx speaker so that you don't go and displace your ancestors. So um, I think Timmy, Timmy, you are part of that training. Is part of that training. Who else is here that is part of that training? I don't know. But Timmy is part of that training. Presently, she is going through that training. Timmy, unmute yourself. How many modules have you yes, taken? Ma'am. I'm how, part, many, ma'am. how many modules have you taken in that training? Because it's self-paced. <laughs> I know some people just abandoned the thing. Uh, you just, uh, you just, uh, you've not taken any money. Well done. Sheba, I'm going to remove you from that group now. Well done. We are in week three. Oh, you have not finished one module. Anyway, so that's just that about that. It's not something we can talk about here. It's quite um much. So, uh, who else has not answered questions? Has not asked the question. Oh, delight. We have just a few minutes to go. Delight, please ask your question. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, you're welcome. Thanks so much for this insightful session. Actually, my question has been answered, so I don't okay. have any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Abdul Asif, please ask your question. Good evening, Ma. Thank you so much for this. So, my name is Abilati Wadadeji. Okay. I'm a mathematics teacher and the educational technology expert. I help teachers to turn their intellectual knowledge into the Okay. I'm beautiful. So, amazing. So, uh, my, my question actually is, uh, is on something I'm currently working on. So, uh, among this year, I started a training on how teachers can switch to digital tools. 
and I've been able to teach more than 100 teachers. So along the line, I realized that I, so actually I'm an academic. So what happened is uh, I started uh, processing CSOG. So I and uh, thank God, just showed up when the academics really were just started. No, the problem now having is that uh, when I start thinking about it, hey, if I register this, that means this is a business. Yes, I want this to become a business. And I've been telling teachers I've had courses, uh, yes, teachers. But my problem is how can I really turn this into a business? I know that uh, this is something that you know have you have tried and you have something you have done, like having a company out of this particular uh, out of you know different coaching program. So my, I don't know how am I going to like turn all the courses I'm having and uh, from the courses I'm having and training I'm having. How can I turn it into? How can I also maybe have a team so that I can also uh, uh, contribute to the uh, employment something like as a business? Okay. Presently, business. do you charge people for your training? Presently, do you charge people? Are you there, Abdul Latif? Are you there? Do you charge people for your training? Have you started making money? Do you collect money for? from people or is free for now. Uh, I can't hear you. Please speak louder. No, I've, I've started collecting money. I've started collecting money. Uh, so it's already a business now. <laughs> when you're collecting money from people to do something, yeah, it's already a business. The only thing you need to do now is um, put in place system processes and structure. That is what now makes it uh, a brand. Because I tell people there's a difference between a business and a business brand. They are not the same thing. They are not the same thing. So when you now put a structure in place, you put a process in place and you put systems in place, that is what makes it a, a business. And since it's now registered, you're good to go. So you might not have to, you might not start with everybody. Like you might not start with three staff or four staff. You might just start alone. And you know, as you're growing the business, you can start thinking about, okay, let me bring. So it's not like, ah, since I'm not a business, I want to be an employer of labor. 10 people come and be working with me. And your income is not even feeding you alone. Not to talk of 10 people. You know, so it's your growth that will now determine the number of people you will bring on board to work with you, you know, and it's from there you will now... So it's it's not about whether you are the one alone working or you have three people working with you. It doesn't mean that it's not a business yet. There's something we call sole proprietorship. But as time goes on, as you are expounding, as you are growing, you can now see that there is a need for you to bring someone on board to help you. There's a need to bring uh, someone on board to assist you. you know, and, and before you know it, it starts of, um, taking shape. So what I will just tell you is that go to your drawing board. I have a system. For, let me give you an example. Now, I run three businesses. Crystal Edge Professional Services. Um, in the Crystal Edge, we do uh, branding consultation. So if you have a business now and you need a branding consultant to help you brand your business. Excuse me. So I will come on board with my team. We are not much, maybe three of us. I have a graphic designer I have, and I have a web designer that work with me and I am the one that will give them the instruction of, okay, let's do it this way, let's do it this, let's do it this way. So that's also, we help companies and businesses to brand their business. Like you don't want to do it yourself, you want us to do it for you. You just relax and let's take care of it. So we design your logo, your website, your templates, your graph, everything, anything branded, branded, we design it for you. So I have that one. Then, and I have an academy. Probably you don't want to pay anybody to do these things for you. You want to do it yourself. You understand it yourself and, you know, do it yourself. And I have another academy, another business, which is an online academy where I teach branding. I teach personal branding, business branding, and corporate branding. So, for instance, if you don't, if you don't have the money to give a consultant, you want to do it yourself, you attend my class, you understand, you get the knowledge, and you execute it by yourself. And I have another business, which is Personal and Career Development Academy. It's also an online school where we train 
passionate individuals and uh, passionate individuals. Passion or we teach uh, individuals who are passionate about personal and career development. So I have three businesses, right? Now, for each of them, I have a syllabus I use. I have what you're going to be learning with one is already there. What you're going to learn in with two, what is the mode of delivery? What is, the, what is the amount I'm charging? You know, I have a structure. So if, for instance, I think you, even you yourself, you've been in my academy before, uh, Abdul I think you have been in PCD Academy before, right? Uh, no, no, ma. I've been in my brand academy. Okay, okay, you've been in, okay. I, I just know that you have been in one of my classes before now. You will know that I have time I start my class. I have the time. You cannot come in the middle of the month and say, I want to pay for I will put you on a waiting list because my coaching program is, already, is always from the beginning of the month to the end of the month. So if you don't join from the beginning, you have to wait for the next batch. So those are the kind of systems you are talking about. I don't know the kind of training, uh, the kind of uh, thing you run in your own business, but put system in place. I have a flyer. I have uh, a, 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 I have a, um, is it uh, a price list, sort of? I have a flyer that has all my prices. I have the, the, the cost outlines of what I will teach you. I have, like, I have all these things. So that's what, we call, that's what we call system and structure. So give your business a system and structure. So it doesn't have to be big. It doesn't have to be like 10 people are working with you or 15 people before you know that ah, this is a real business. Of course, I have people that work with me in PCD Academy. I have seven people, but they are not... Uh, they are not paid. I call them board of management. They are like the non-executive directors for all these big companies. But I give them some bonuses occasionally. There are seven of them. I have the director for academy, uh, for training. I have the director for training. I have the director for exams and record. I have the director for events. I have the director for travel and tour. I have the director for publicity. You know, I have secretary. We are like seven or eight in that board of management. In fact, when I wanted to appoint them, I gave them an official letter. I've suspended some of them. I've suspended two of them since we started in 2019. One of them left voluntarily to start our own store. You know, and we are still there. We are still there functioning well. Planning our events, doing our training every month since 2019. So give your, when I was doing the inauguration for them, it was a, it was a live event, it was a physical event. So it's not a MMM something, it's a genuine business. So it's the kind of structure you give your business that will make people to take you serious. And so it doesn't have to be like, oh, you are 20, you are 30, you are 50. You can even get team, you can even get team member of three or four volunteers who will be working alongside with you and you'll just be giving them some bonuses depending on your agreements, depending on what you want. So that is just what I would tell you. And I also have a course. I have a course, um, the business of coaching. I have a co course titled the business of coaching. So in, in that course, a lot of people are coaches that want uh, to, to establish their academy or they want to establish a business in this coaching industry. That course is going to help you to know how to structure your courses, how to manage your academy and all that. Sure. So that is just uh, it. I hope it answers your question. Who else has not answered, has not asked any question? Um, Damaris, please go ahead. I think you're the only one left. Damaris, are you there? Okay, happy. Ah, sorry, happy. Sorry. <laughs> God, we don't forget you. <laughs> I keep I keep skipping you. Ah, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Please go ahead with your question. No problem. I, I, I think it's my fault. I came in late. So uh, really yes, I think that was the my face was not really on you because it came late. No problem. Please go ahead with your question if you have any. Yes, ma. Please, uh, my, my question might be deviating a little bit, but please, I will beg your advice. I will seek for your advice. Um, I'm actually working. I'm not actually doing anything for my personal self. I'm actually working for somebody. Okay. But I've been going for. I've been getting granting and interviews from different different job I applied for. Many of them, I even think I'm even a 
been successful along the line, but at the end of the day, I will just get a mail that, sorry, we we'll pick somebody else over you. I don't know if it's due to my pricing or I don't know why, because even if just the one that even gets to case study, I will do the case study, I will get a message that I've done well, I'll be granted to the next level. Before I know, the mail will just come saying that you have not been successful for the next level. I don't know if it's my pricing or my personality, I don't know. I just want to find out about that if there's anything I could do or I'm doing wrong. Okay. Thank you. Your question is not out of place because this is just a mentoring session, so it covers all. Uh, one thing I would advise you do is that you can always ask them, yes. I don't know because Nigeria, Nigeria my country, <laughs> I don't know. Things are quite different in Nigeria. Because in this place where I work, I told you I work with an international organization. If they interview you for any position and they send an, a rejection mail to you, you can ask them, you can reply to me and say, oh, thank you for getting back to me. I really appreciate this. Please, can you highlight those areas you feel I did not do well or you think I can improve myself during that interview? or things you think I did not do right that make you prefer someone else over me, I'll be, I'll be glad to hear from you. Thank you. If you send such mail, they will reply you. I've not sent such before, but I take an interview of an internal position in my, organization, in my present organization. I, was, I, was, uh, I wasn't picked. I knew I wasn't picked anyway. I knew I wasn't going to be picked because I didn't do well for the interview. Let's not lie. I didn't do well for the interview. So... So a, a friend, so when I now told a friend that I didn't do well for this interview, blah, blah, blah. And later, they now when they now when the rejection email now came, and I told my dad, my friend, ah, they finally sent that rejection email. That when I even saw it, I wasn't really surprised because I knew I didn't do well for that interview. And it was really, really painful. You know. So the lady now said, I, I can actually ask them to give me like a brief of why I said there is no need. Me that I did interview, I know what did I what I did not do well. So there is no need of just Wasting my time, you understand. So, and I asked her that, did you, as they happened to, she just said yes, that uh, every time they reject her for a position, she always send an email to them and they would tell her. And if you did not do anything wrong, they would just tell you that they just prefer this person. In fact, there is something, there, is, there must be something that they, 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 they see that did not make them to pick you. There must be something. There must be something, and they will be. They will tell you the HR department will tell you because they are the one that computes the results. The final decision passed through them, so they should tell you. But Nigeria, my dear country, huh, I don't know. I don't know how it's working in that country because <laughs> work ethics in that country is totally different from what is obtainable here. I don't know. Another thing you can do is what, what I used usually do when I was still in Nigeria, trying to get jobs, switch job here and there. Is that when I finish an interview, I send a thank you email. I don't even know where I came across that particular thing, but I know that I read it somewhere. So since ever since then, once I go for an interview and I come back like this, I will just send, send a thank you email. And there was one interview that I went for that that thing really spoke for me because they mentioned it to me. My colleague mentioned it to me when I resumed work finally. She said, Your thank you email that you sent. Uh, really um, gave you an upper hand during the selection process. That oh, this lady sent a thank you email. You know, just just Google it. Thank you email after interview. That one should be able to help you too. Then you can also check in Word. That's the last thing I want. Just check yourself in Word. Honest review. You know, at times when people give us review, we don't want to take it honestly. You say, ah, maybe he doesn't like me. Maybe this. But you yourself, yourself, sit down yourself and check yourself and say, what didn't I do? Be honest with yourself. If it is your dressing, tell yourself, ah, you don't used to dress well when you go for interview. If it is your confidence level, ah, you used to shake a lot when you go for interview. You know, people already, they, they, can, they can smell people who are timid. Nobody wants to work with somebody that is timid, somebody that is not confident. They, nobody wants to work with such people. So don't, you can also check out for it and say, okay, during my interview, do I used to 
uh, shake? Do I use to fidget? Do I use to be afraid or something like that? So you can try to also do it an honest review so that from there you will be able to pick out what the problem is uh, during your interviews. So I think that is helpful. I want to believe it's helpful. Uh, we have just few, we have passed our one hour, but I think we have just two people more, then we we'll call it a day. Uh, Damaris, are you there or you are still not there? Damaris, are you there? Uh, she's not yes, here. here Please go ahead with your question if you have any. No, I don't have any question. Okay, thank you. Adiola is raising her hand. Adiola Rachel, I think you are the last person on our list. Please ask your question. Adiola Rachel, I can see you raising your hand and I've given you the floor. Unmute yourself, please. Unmute yourself. If you don't have any questions, I don't have, I don't have, I don't have a question. You don't have a question. Okay. But you are raising up your hand. It's a mistake. Okay, okay. Okay, so I think oh, we have really done well to be able to manage our time to this uh, level. And I want to say a very big thank you to every one of us who have joined this broadcast. I believe you've gotten value one way or the other. Uh, if you have not asked your question, let me know. But I think we are done. I think we are done. So, um, finally, we are done with this session. And I promise you three ebooks. I promise you three, three ebooks. Number one is Profitable Passion. The name of the ebook is Profitable Passion. From that book, you'll be able to understand it's, all my ebooks are not long ago these are not my normal my published book oh. they are just pdf they are just ebook pdf because most times i don't like to type directly on any platform because once it's uh, you you lost your phone or your phone gets formatted or something the thing will just wiped off so most times i like putting my stuff in pdf so that i can access it anytime any day you too you can save it on your google drive and you know to just be there so all, the, all of them are not really like this profitable passion i think it's like 10 pages 10 a4 pages so in that book you'll be able to learn how you can convert your passion into profits the do and don'ts and i, I have another book on personal development that i want to give you uh it's just like a summary of everything I've talked about under personal development. And all the niches, all the areas of personal development I talk, I talk to you about, everything is listed there so that you can go through it and see which one you really need, which one you really need to get. Uh, that is number two. And number three ebook I will be giving you is this Google because I, I already planned it even before this person asked the question. Uh, because the idea just came from my... The idea just came from what my daughter said about this Google thing. Uh, she's on Google. My mommy, you're on Google. So I just felt, okay, let me design an ebook, maybe one page or two pages, talking about how you can be visible on Google. So that is going to be the third ebook I'm going to be giving you. Now, there's a criteria for that ebook. It's not free like you think. It's not free. So Anyway, it's, it's not something that is big. You're not going to be paying for it. Uh, you are going to do something, and this is it. Uh, take the screenshots. Take the screenshots of this uh, session. Take the screenshot of this session. And once you take the screenshots, okay, I'm, I'm coming. I want to also take the screenshots. So. I just remembered now when I talked about it. So let me also take the screenshots. Okay, so take the screenshots of this session and you'll make a post on, on LinkedIn. Just 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 write a, a brief summary. If there even be two lines or three lines. Just write a brief summary about what you learned from this session, uh, how this session has been helpful or impactful to you. Just write it and, and tag me. On LinkedIn only. Any other platform will not be counted, please. On LinkedIn only. Uh, once you write it, you can do on Monday. Any, anytime you do, you collect your e-books. But from Monday, 
from Monday, you can do the post and tag me or mention me. What do they call it? Mention or tag me in that post so that I can see it and know that you have done it. So once you do that, I'll send the ebook to your email. So you just tell me your email. Or you don't even need to tell me because I already have your email in my database if it is correct. So, so once I see the tag, I'll just go to your email and send those three ebooks to you. And that is just that about that. So I think that is clear enough. So do the screenshots before we end the live session so that you have something to post with when you are making your post. So that brings us to the end of the session. Thank you, everyone who have joined this live video. I hope it has been impactful. And if anyone is interested in any of my classes, any of my coaching program, mentorship, business of coaching class, personal branding, personal development, and all that, let me know. You can private chat me on WhatsApp. Since you have my WhatsApp contacts now, you can private chat me on WhatsApp. Or you can drop your question or your inquiries. You can drop it in the LinkedIn group, in the WhatsApp group that we have for this uh, LinkedIn video. So um, do we have anybody saying anything? Thank you so much, Ma. It's impactful, Ma. Thank you so much, Ma. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for thanking me. Thank you for thanking me. Thank you for thanking me. You're all welcome. So um, I'm coming. Someone sent me a private, a private message, so I'm trying to read it. Okay. This is really helpful. Much appreciated. You're all welcome. Thank you. Good night, everyone. You can unmute yourself and say good night to people. Good night, Victoria. Have a wonderful Good night, everybody. Sunday service Good night. tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Good night. And please let's connect. Let's connect with each other. Let's connect. You can all drop your LinkedIn. Please drop your LinkedIn um link in the in, in our WhatsApp group so that people you can connect with each other. You know, let's connect. Let's connect. Let's engage with each other. Please don't just be on your own. Engage with people, make uh, friends, build relationship. I think I've talked about all that today. So please, you are permitted to drop your LinkedIn profile uh, link in the WhatsApp group so that we can connect with each other. Thank you, everyone, once again. God bless you. Good night, and my regards to your family. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Unfortunately, weekends are made in China. They don't last. <laughs> Before you know it now, it's Monday already. My own weekend is actually not really different from any other day because I work from home and I have I do a lot of trainings during my weekend. So my weekend is just like every normal working day. But I most of most of the time I find time to rest a bit on Sunday. Just maybe maybe just a bit. So that's all by the way. Good night, everyone. My guest, your family. God bless you. Good night, ma. Facebook people, good night. Thanks for joining. God bless you.